Hello again everybody and welcome back. Boyd here with you and we have another edition of Trekworks here for you today. We're working again on our TOS 1350 scale Enterprise and you guys remember where we left off last time as we were doing the assembly work on the shuttle bay. And what I'm doing today is I've got that all assembled and I've tested it into the model here. And I'm looking at my initial lighting. I'm, I've got my hull lighting here going on. I don't have the, uh, the neck wired in here yet but uh, i got all my rear windows lit up now, as you can see. We've got our little green window here on each side at the rear. And uh, I've got my uh, round two board, which operates the uh, uh, flashing ion pods here connected. So we're testing that out to make sure that's all working. And I'll give you a little look here at the uh, shuttle bay. You can see what we've done on this particular one. We've done something a little bit different. We've got the shuttle bay uh, installed in this to where it's hovering, like I mentioned. And then I decided to mount these two little... Uh, red flashing lights uh, in there with some fiber optics because uh, I thought it might be kind of neat to uh, simulate sort of a uh, uh, flashing red light you know warning thing or something when the shuttle was launching you know we never really got to see a whole lot of the uh, TOS shuttle bay especially that end of it when uh, they were actually launching a shuttle so who knows maybe they could have had something like that in there but I wanted to do something neat and different for my client here so we try to do each one of these shuttle bays a little bit different and I think it turned out cool you can see we've got the forward front of the window section of the shuttle lit and uh, so all my lighting is working in here in a little while I'll get you I'll take the camera off the tripod and I'll get you a closer look inside the bay you can see we've got all our windows lit and everything uh, so I just wanted to show you how what we're doing here with the testing now what I'm going to be doing is um, we're getting ready to seal this up I've got to mount the pylons on it and we've got to feed some wire through those and through the secondary hull so that we can connect that to power and then also connect that when we mount it on our base to our momentary switch because we're going to have to run power uh, through these uh, pylons up to our Bassard uh, boards that we've got from tenant controls that are going to go in this and uh, we've also got to have a separate wire for the trigger for the momentary switch which uh, controls the uh, so you can change the speed of the uh, Bassard boards and we're going to show you that all step by step here as we get ready to set all this up so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, pause for a second and come back I'm going to disassemble the hull here and we're going to show you an up-close view of how we wired up the uh, uh, shuttle bay and got all the lighting to work inside here before we get ready to close this all up. So let me come back with that in just a second. All right, everyone. So here we have the uh, secondary hull uh, broken back open here. And you can see we have the shuttle bay here. And I'll just kind of explain uh, how I wired this all up. And I've got our lighting going on. Now you can see I've used these uh, SMDs, which I've grown, grown really fond of for use for lighting in really small, tight areas. And as I talked about earlier, what we did is to set this up is uh, I used my Dremel tool to grind some really uh, shallow trenches here on each side of the uh, shuttle bay wall, which uh, allows the wires to sit down on their flush because, as I mentioned, we don't want to have anything sticking up on the edges of this uh, shuttle bay wall at all because it's such a tight fit inside of this model any anything that's touching on the side of the wall is going to cause a larger gap there at the top so we uh, we've got these laid down in here we've glued these all in place we have the SMDs which are uh, facing outward which are actually going to serve to light our side windows which you saw just a second ago but that light reflecting back uh, from the inside of the hull also is, is passing through these little window areas here and giving us the lighting on the inside of the shuttle bay for the uh, the control room uh, windows that we see on the inside. Up here on the top we've got one SMB that I've mounted inside of this little recessed area which is like a control room at the ceiling and then we've got one that we extended further that's tipped up on its side so that it will throw light forward here which we'll use to uh, it will actually help to serve to light the little uh, uh, dome that's on top of the uh, secondary hull above the shuttle bay and that little light that's above the shuttle bay doors at the rear uh, this one here is facing upward and what that one's going to be doing is providing a little bit of light to those three little beacons that are on the top that you see and that light reflecting down again off the bottom of the hull lights the uh, the ceiling really nicely here on the shuttle bay <clears throat> and we have the same thing over here on this side these uh, SMDs I use are all pre-wired and so they come with um, a resistor built onto them and you just basically have a plus and the minus you can see we've ran them all and connected them all together on this harness uh, I've got this all heat shrunk underneath and I'm just using this masking tape to kind of hold everything uh, together and it's, so it's not all kind of all over the place right now. The wiring is still really rough right now. It's not all been put in there really neatly or anything and you can see we've got everything connected and I'll explain this as we go. Um, so you can see that we've got all this tied together and tied into our main power that comes in which is 
going to be 12 volts, which is the uh, a round two power supply uh, that comes with the round two lighting kit is 12 volts. And so it will light all these lights. Now here <clears throat> you can see I've got um, uh, those little red lights that I showed you a second ago that are flashing inside. Basically what that is is it's a real piece, of, a short piece of fiber optic that I glued in place and then cut them off. And I've got some very small 1.8 millimeter red LEDs mounted on, glued against the back side of them here. And uh, they are connected into the uh, flasher circuit for the um, ion pods here. Well, in order to do that, you can't just connect them directly, even though we are uh, the board itself provides a resistor, uh, which runs this LED here for each of the uh, ion flashers. Uh, you still need to run a resistor between that and any other lighting that you want to hook up to it, because that resistor, uh, without that, the, uh, the current draw on the uh, uh, LED that I've got mounted here is too much for this, and it will cause the flasher not to work. Uh, it'll just come on and stay on steady. It won't flash. So we found that out with a little bit of experimentation. So uh, I have a 470 ohm resistor connected on the positive side between this LED here and this line, which you can't see it right now because it's covered up. But that's how we wired that up. We did it on both sides here. And then uh, we've got our... Um, so we've got our lighting for the rear of the shuttle bay all in place. And we've got this one SMD down here, which is wired into the same harness, which is going to serve to light our... Uh, landing approach lights on the fan tail there and so that'll that one little SMD lights that whole thing really nicely now you can see moving forward here we've got some uh, LED tape mounted for our window lighting for the hull and that's very straightforward each one is connected to power plus and minus and it's all tied in together here at the front now again I mentioned this is very rough right now I'll be cleaning all this up this is just my initial setup to test everything and uh, we'll get all that cleaned up and what will happen here is we'll be bringing in power from the uh, uh, bottom of the model, which is where the uh, mounting rod comes in. We'll have two power wires come in, which will be our plus and our minus. Those will connect directly to the main harness here, which will run uh, the board here, which needs 12-volt uh, power brought into it, which in turn the board operates the flashing unit, which flashes these uh, strobe lights here. And then we've got to run a jumper wire from that, which runs up through the neck and into the saucer, which operates the second uh, flasher board, which is this unit here that mounts in the saucer that operates the navigational flasher lights at the top. Uh, and so then we'll be tying all that in. And uh, our power needs to run up there so we can mount all of our strip lighting into the uh, saucer area as well. So very simply put here, this is all tied together in one spot so that we've got power coming in. Now we'll be bringing in, um, uh, as I mentioned, that, that signal wire that, that's used to control the speed of the Bessard so that when you push that momentary switch each time you push it, it changes the speed, so we're going to bring that same wire in through this harness, through the uh, rod, the mounting rod from the base. We'll be bringing that through the hull, and that has to run up through these slots here and out through the pylons and up into the engine nacelles all the way to the boards, which are going to be mounted at the very front of the nacelle. So that's kind of it in a nutshell, guys. Um, same thing goes here. We'll put our neck down. Now you can see I've only got power coming out the top of this neck now, which is going to uh, branch off and go into all the power in the saucer, so I'll be running a power wire up through the neck once we get that mounted and that will power up everything here and power everything in the saucer so you can think of it as just one constant chain um, for how all this is done and again uh, these LEDs uh, strip LEDs they just have a plus and a minus and you can see we've got a red for a plus and a green for a minus and they're just simply all tied together since these already have resistors built in you don't need any resistors for any of this and we're bringing it all together and tying it in and we're powering everything in one spot and we're branching off of that and going up to the saucer. So there's where we're at, guys. Now, I'm going to be uh, doing a little bit of work here, and I'll come back. What, I, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to uh, get the uh, shuttle, shuttle bay all ready to be placed down in here, and we're going to be running some wires up, and we're going to mount a pile on, e on each side and get our wires run through that and get all this wiring all nice and tidy in there. And I'll give you a shot of this just before we close it up and show you how everything looks before uh, just before we seal it. And once it's sealed, we've also got to uh, install our... Uh, uh, deflector dish housing up here at the front because that's kind of a pinch fit. You can't put that on very easily after this is put together so we want to make sure we put that in before we close the hull up. Uh, and the neck can be dropped down in after that. But uh, So that's where we're going to be going from here guys. I'll be back with that in just a few minutes. And uh, the goal today is to get the secondary hull all put together and get the pylons mounted and the neck installed and we'll be ready to um, start working on the uh, saucer and the mounting the nacelles next. So we'll be right back with that. 
Okay guys, I'm back with you again and we're just about ready to seal up the secondary hull. I've got the control board here for the primary hull in place which runs the uh, ion flashing lights here at the back and the two flashers that we have inside the shuttle bay. We've got our trigger wire uh, coming down here for our speed control of our bassards. And we've got the wires run up through the pylons which will power up the bassard lighting. So we've got that done on both sides here. And so it's ready to close up. I can, you can see I've got the mounting rod in place now, so once I get this all put together, we can actually put it up on the stand. And uh, everything's ready to go here. So uh, basically just kind of going over this again. We've got power coming in, connecting here to the board, which then connects to the main lighting of the strip lights and everything else, which is all just a simple circuit of connecting plus to minus, all in one continuous line. And we've wired each one of these uh, light strips up individually, so we're making sure that in case we get a break somewhere, we get power. The rest of the stuff will continue to get power. The same thing back here at the shuttle bay. We've got our little SMD underneath on the bottom, which is going to light up our uh, fan tail lights. So everything is in place and ready to go. Now we've got three wires coming out here on the bottom. You can see I've got these connected to power, uh, the red and the black. And that's lighting everything in here. And you can see where our flashers and everything are working. Uh, the third wire here, which I use this gold colored uh, magnet wire, will be for our trigger, which will be our separate. Uh, push button on the base that will uh, control the uh, momentary switch which will again control the speed of the uh, bassards every time we push it. So everything's ready to go. So let's get this thing closed up. I'll come back and show you a shot of the model up on the stand and everything all sealed up so we'll be back with that in just a second. Okay so here we are with the secondary hull all mounted on the base. And you can see we've got our base, uh, the holes pre-drilled there for our switches, and it's been primed. I'll be painting that base in nice satin black and putting a clear coat on it, and we'll paint that mounting rod black as well. You can see I've got it hooked up to temporary power here, and I'll explain again what I did. I've got my power coming down that we connected inside the model. We've got a basic wire here, a black and a red, which is plus and minus, running to 12 volts off of my uh, temporary power supply here. And then we've got this third wire, which will connect... Uh, where the switch is located over here, which is just a momentary switch, which will operate the speed control on the bassards. And this, of course, here will be our on and off switch, uh, push button switch. And uh, you can see I'm just testing my lighting here while it's uh, just after I sealed it to make sure everything's good. It's looking great. You can see we've got our flashers going on and all our window lighting is looking nice and clean, lit up really brightly. And then here at the back, you can see the shuttle bay. I've added that little fan tail uh, detail here. Uh, to, to do that, I mask that off with some of the uh, uh, orbital dry dock window masks for the windows, and they made the nice lines there, and I did the uh, colors with some uh, transparent Tamiya red and green, and I really like how the little red flashing lights look in there. You can see our shuttle hovering off the floor, and our uh, window lighting and everything, our control room lighting is all coming through really nice inside the shuttle bay. So things are looking really good, guys. Uh, here you can see we have the control board that will be going in the saucer. This build will start moving along really fast now. This is the major part of the build, and once you get this part done, the rest of it's uh, pretty straightforward. You can see we have our power coming out. Uh, this particular one here is the harness that plugs into that board, and that controls the navigation lights at the top and the saucer, and these two wires here are for power. So in the next video, what we're going to be doing, guys, is coming and in, installing the neck, installing the bottom half of the saucer, and getting all of our lighting installed in that, mount the control board, get all that connected up, and then do all of our putty work and then we'll add the nacelles and the top of the saucer and she'll be assembled so we'll see you for that uh, in another day or two guys so thanks for tuning in again and checking us out I hope you're enjoying the videos we'll see you in a couple of days guys with another update on the TOS 350 Enterprise until then take care and happy modeling everyone